Welcome back to another episode of Alaska Reef. On this video, we are going to be building a stand for the 90 gallon aquarium that we'll be doing in the dining room. So in this video, we are actually going to be cutting out quite a bit of the woodworking that went into this. Uh, this stand took significantly longer than I was anticipating. Now, part of that is the shipping delays that were up here. Part of it was the availability of parts, but mostly it was just a complicated build. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my sump fits. Um, that's called measure twice and then double check your work. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to do was get this all built and then realize that my sump didn't fit because I didn't measure correctly. But what I'm doing now is I'm building the base of the stand. And so this base is being used with two, I'm using two by sixes here. And I'm doing that because ultimately I'm going to make this base waterproof so that if I have a spill in any way, it's going to be contained in this base below. And I'll be putting a Neptune Systems uh, water detector in the base so that my apex will alert me if it ever gets wet. And hopefully that will give me enough time to rectify the situation before it overflows this two by six frame. So I'm going through and I'm making sure that I pre-drill all my holes and then I'm gonna go through and run three inch screws into this so it will be held together with three inch screws. I've got some wood glue between the joints, but mostly it's gonna be these massive screws that are gonna be holding this whole thing together. So I'm gonna go through, use my level, make sure that this is perfectly straight before I screw it in. I'm gonna do this on all four corners just to make sure that everything is level, square, plumb. This part of the build is time consuming to get right, but it really will show in the end product. So this is something I really took my time with. This whole stand, just getting the framework done, that, that took a couple of days. And now we're gonna move into the actual face frame. And this is where you're gonna see why you don't wear sandals in your shop. But just like in the, just like in the other build of the canopy, I'm tearing apart a perfectly good cabinet. And here we go, oh yeah. Yeah, that one felt good. So don't be like me and please wear shoes in your shop. All right, taking the rest of these panels off in the most creative way of fashion. Now the tedious task of pulling out all of these nails. And so these little staples are actually what hold the diamond cabinets together. And so I know I've gotten questions before, why am I using these diamond cabinets? And it's really simple. I had a bunch of these left over from one of our rental properties and we did a remodel in the kitchen. I had a whole bunch left over and I figured why not just repurpose these because they do match the shaker style cabinets that we have in our kitchen. Um, they're not the same quality. And so all I needed was the face frame and the door. So they're not the same quality, but really when you look at them from a distance or even when you're up close to them, you really can't tell, uh, especially once they're painted. And so, I wanted it to look close enough. I, I couldn't order the cabinets that I really wanted from the manufacturer that we got our kitchen cabinets from that would be able to support the weight. And I definitely was not gonna tear those apart uh, to build these with because they were significantly more expensive. And so here I'm actually making sure that this is square. So I'm measuring from each corner and making sure that I've got my cuts right and that I've got everything leveled out straight and I've got everything plumb. And now I'm gonna start doing the same thing on this upper piece. So this is made out of two by fours. This is going to be my upper support bracing that is going to actually hold the tank. And now comes the fun part of cutting all the support pieces for this. So these are all gonna be the vertical support pieces that are gonna hold the top frame to the two by six frame below. And so these actually control the height of my stand which since I'm using pre-made cabinet door and cabinet face frame, I had to get perfect. 
Speaking of perfect, uh, for a few cuts there, you definitely saw that my saw was off. Even though it was zeroed out, I didn't take the time to put a square against the, the fence. And so what ended up happening, I was slightly off and I had to go ba back and recut all of those pieces because I didn't take the time initially to make sure that my saw was square. Speaking of square and plumb, we're going through and we are making sure that all of these upright support posts are square and plumb. So that way we know when we put our top piece on that it's going to fit. Doing this on all four corners, screwing in on both sides. There is wood glue applied between the joints. So now we're going to take the top part, put it on the bottom. We're going to flip the entire stand upside down. So that two by six frame is now on the top. And we're doing that so that gravity works in my favor. And I don't have to try to hold up the top frame while I screw it together. All right, got that done, flipped everything upside down, did a temporary fit of the face frame just to see how it's looking. And now I'm going to make sure that I get these support braces in. One of the disadvantages of using quartz as a countertop is that it does not have great tensile strength. And so what you have to do is make sure that it's really well supported on the stand or the cabinet below. And in this situation, I'm going to have a huge tank on top of this quartz piece. And so I wanted to have extra bracing and I wanted to make sure that I had extra support so that and there was no wiggle at all. Everything had to be perfectly flat on top so that there was no high spot for the quartz to crack. So these pieces that I'm attaching now are actually going to be additional support for that two by four top. And it will be carrying the load down to the two by six below. So a little overkill, I'm sure some people will say, but for me, in Alaska, we get a ton of earthquakes. And so I just want to make sure everything is solid, that we go way overkill in this build because I need everything to be solid. So I'm going to do the front side. I'm going to do the sides with those support brackets. And then you're going to see here in just a second, I'm actually going to end up putting an additional two by four layer over the front, just like that, because I need to build in about a one and a half inch lip so that it will actually match what my cabinets look like in my kitchen. And it will make more sense here as we go along. First, I'm gonna get this whole face frame screwed in, and then I'm gonna take that two by four that is not attached, cut it down just like that, and now attach it. And now you're gonna see what I mean there. See the little lip down at the bottom? It's gonna look just like my cabinets in my kitchen. All right, over to the half inch maple plywood. Now, if you notice that little black piece of string that is coming off my Matita track saw there, that is a new track. And so when you first make a first cut, it will take that little rubber piece and cut it just perfect with your saw. So that's what I was doing there. Really should have been supporting that piece all along. Good job, Brett. All righty, this is the back of the stand. We just use some quarter inch Luan to make this work. And now I'm going to use pin nails to hold it in place. And then I'm going to flip it on its side. And I'm actually going to use a staple gun and staple it in with, uh, with narrow crown staples. See, there's less woodworking in this video. I didn't say there would be no woodworking, but there is less woodworking. All right, getting that done, moving on to the bottom. Now, I know I told you I was going to make this, uh, this bottom part waterproof, and some of you are going to question why I'm doing this in two pieces. There will be a caulk joint between the two. It will still be waterproof. Um, but let's just say this is the one thing that I cheaped out on, and I'm going to be honest, it may come back to bite me. I hope it doesn't. Moving on to the side panels now. So these side panels are actually going to be the finished grade. These are what you're going to see on the sides of the stand. So these are the part that I actually care about that people will actually see. And so again, half inch maple veneer plywood, which I'm a big fan of. Um, it's basically cabinet grade. Once you sand it, it looks real nice. So I'm gonna run these down. But remember that lip that I was talking about? Yeah, so I gotta cut that out with this little, this little tool here which I love, it's like a little vibrating saw. 
and then I'm going to use my track saw to cut the longer edge. And so I, between the two, you'll see I make a little cutout here. It works real well. I'm going to do it on the other side now. And then we're going to put these on the sides of the stand, and that's going to be finished. So there you go. See the little lip down below? So there's going to be a baseboard that's going to run down there that we're going to paint as well. I'm going to get that on here in just a minute. And there's my baseboard. Looky there. All right, get that pinned in. Once that, that is pinned in, we can start working on getting this thing actually finally assembled. So this face frame is going on for good now. And so there's some glue between the two by fours and the face frame. And then I'm using a 23 gauge pin nailer to put those together. Now we're gonna start having some real fun. One of the things that I did not like about the stands that I've had before is my wire management, my wire and cable management. And so what I've decided to do on this one is build in an electronics board where my apex and all of my outlets are going to be sitting. So this is gonna be on the side of the stand inside, and I'm actually gonna use really strong magnets to hold this together. And you can already see that, yes, I did screw up that little, um, the little pocket hole there. I screwed up. I tried actually putting the magnet on the side with the plywood and not on the side with the two by fours, and that did not work. And so I actually had to kind of revisit some things put the magnets on the side with the two by four. So it's actually on the stand itself. And then the catches, the little metal tabs are actually going on the electronics board. That gives me more bite with the, uh, the screw that I use to hold everything together. All right, getting these finalized. These are the actual magnets and we already have the washers on the electronics board. So let's put this up and see how it works. Oh, this is going to be so cool when it's all done. We're going to cover the wiring of this in another video. But now we get to my favorite part. God, I love this little Flexio 5000. This thing sprays so, so well. It is easy to clean. It is easy to use. This video is not sponsored by Wagner. Um, however, it's just, it's a tool that I just love to use. And after the canopy, I've just become hooked on it. And so I'm going to cover here in a minute how I actually deal with paint. I've had a lot of questions after my last video, so let's go ahead and talk about that here really fast. How do I thin my paint? What do I do with my paint? And here, let's have a conversation with past Brett about how he did this. All right, so in another video, I talked about how I thin paint and how I'm now doing it more by sight than anything. So I look at this and I think, you know, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good thickness on the paint. And here's the thing, if you get it too thin, if you, if you over thin it, just add more paint. If it's not thin enough, add more water. All right. So the big thing that you need to remember on all of this is always, 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 Strain your paint, always, 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 always. And if you're curious why I always strain my paint, see all the chunks that are developing in there? So, always strain your paint. All right, so we have our paint thinned, we have our paint strained. Put our top on the sprayer here. I'm not using any Floetrol in, in this one. Um, usually I use Floetrol in my paint and, and uh, I'm not doing it on this one. And if you have no idea, if you didn't see the other, the other video where I talked about it. This is Floetrol. And so basically what it does is it eliminates brush and roller marks. On my last couple of coats on the canopy, I didn't use this and it paint turned out great. So I'm gonna stick with what I know. And so what I did instead was I increased the turbine pressure and I reduced the gun pressure. So I'm putting more air in and less paint. And we're gonna line these two up. We're gonna click them in. I'm gonna back my gun off a little bit, which is good. I make sure that I have power. All right, let's get sprayed. So I'm gonna do a test spray before I get out onto the nice stuff that people are gonna see. I'm gonna test spray. 
So I'm actually going to come around here. I'm going to spray on stuff people aren't going to see. Alright. Align my gun. Alright, now I'll come on stuff people are going to see. All right, so we got our first coat on. Let's kind of take you around here. So that's coat number one. Just like we did with the canopy, the surfaces that I hit real hard are the horizontal surfaces, right? The ones that are laying flat. And I do that because I can lay a lot of paint on really fast and I got gravity working with me. So when I have gravity working with me, I can lay more, more paint on and not be as concerned about runs. On the sides, you'll notice that I don't do quite as heavy of a coat because when I put heavy coats on, they just pull down, the gravity's gonna pull it down, it's gonna run. So, all right, there's the first coat. Let's wait a few minutes and get another coat on. Alrighty, so I just went over this morning and I ordered the countertop for my stand, which means that I gotta get this going because uh, McKinley countertops, they're here in Anchorage, they're phenomenal. Uh, they did our kitchen, they've done a couple of our rental properties, they've done a couple other things for us. They rock. And so, they tend to have my projects done really, really fast. So that means that I am gonna have a countertop here, like, soon. My, my countertop might actually beat my other door. So here's what I'm working with right now. I've already got a couple of coats of paint on it. You guys saw me spraying with my Flexio 5000, but that means that I now have to get this done way sooner than I thought I was going to. Which means though, I'm going to be able to have water in this tank sooner than I thought. So I'm waiting for another coat to dry and then I have to use my Flexio 5000 and get another coat on this thing. I think I've probably got two or three more coats to go. So, here goes nothing. Alrighty, so we're over here at McKinley Countertops and our countertop for the stand is just finishing getting polished. And then we're gonna bring this home and get this installed. So we've got the notch cut out and we're gonna be all ready. Quick little update. I've got one door on. I need two more doors, but they are drying. So we're gonna let those dry. Those two doors are gonna go on. The countertop is actually ready to go, but the uh, countertop actually, I, I need to, I'm gonna wait until I have the stand up in place before I actually secure the countertop down. And so, Canopy is ready to go. So we are all ready. We just have to wait for this to dry, and this to dry, and then I probably need to get, I mean, realistically, probably two more coats. I think two more coats and these will be good to go. While the cabinet is drying, I'm going to show you one of the things that I had to do here. So unfortunately, the shipping in Alaska has bit me yet again. And so instead of getting the door and the frame that I wanted, I actually ended up having to build this door frame around this door. And that's just because, you know, when you order stuff here, sometimes it doesn't get here. And in my case, it didn't get here. I still have to paint the back side of this door, but I actually ended up having to be a woodworker and actually build this whole wooden door frame which is fine. It still looks good. I'm real happy with it. And I think overall this project has come along quite well. I'm going to put up some final shots here of really how everything turned out so you can kind of get an idea. All right, there's the final product with all three doors on and there's the final product in its home. The next video up is going to be actually getting the wiring done and actually getting everything put together. We gotta get the tank on the stand. So make sure to join me along on that. If you got something out of this video, please make sure to subscribe, like, and if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit the bell icon so you can know whenever I launch something new. You guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk soon.